in the last video we got ready to prepare it, I guess you would say, to make the retrofit query to Elasticsearch by getting the Elasticsearch password and then retrieving the user's filters that they want to use for the search. Now we're going to actually build the, the query itself. So uh, to start off, let's create an array list, a new array list, and this is going to be the one, the array list that's holding the values that we're searching for. So private array list, uh, it's going to be an array list of posts. So M posts, posts is what we'll call it. And oh, need to import the array list library. And so inside the search, every time the search is executed, we're going to do M posts equals new array list right away. Uh, okay, so now let's construct everything we need for retrofit. So we go retrofit, retrofit equals new retrofit. So new retrofit dot builder. And then we uh, connect a bunch of, we use the builder class because we're concatenating or we're using a bunch of methods in sequence. Um, and the first one is going to be the base URL. So the base URL is the one that's contained here. So in our case, it's going to be everything before search because if we, so I'm just going to copy that and go back because if you look at our API class, so if we go into our Java classes and open up our Elastic Search API class, we can see that it appends search right here. So we, the base URL is basically everything before that. So that's, that's what we need here. So that's why I'm grabbing all of this. I actually do need that slash also. So I'm copying all that. And I'm going to create a global variable to hold the URL. So private static final string, uh, I'll call it base URL and paste that in. And so that's going to be our base URL for our search. And I'm going to type that in here now. So base URL. And then the next parameter is going to be our converter factory. And in our case, we're using a JSON converter factory because we're searching for JSON data. And then we just do uh, dot build. And that's how we construct our retrofit. So now, uh, next, we need to, to create our Elasticsearch API object. So I'm going to call it search API. And then we go retrofit.create, because this, this is the create method on retrofit to actually build our API class, Elasticsearch.class. And there we go. That will build our, our um, Elasticsearch API. Now we're ready to, we need to get everything we need. So if we look in here, we have, we need to get the headers. We need to get the operator and we need to get the query. So those three things we need, and then we can execute the search method on our API object right here, or our API interface, sorry. So we'll do them one by one. The first thing we need is the headers. The headers are gonna be a hash map because they're just key value pairs. So we do a string, string, and we'll call it a header map. It's usually what I just call it. And then we go new hash map, and there we go. And now we can attach the headers. So header map dot put, we actually only need one header, and that's the authorization header. So authorization, and then we do comma, and we can do credentials. I think it's, no, it's a okay HTTP3 credentials. And then we do dot basic. And in here, we can do our username, and then we can pass our password. So in that case, it's going to be our Elasticsearch password. And whoops, I don't need that there. There we go. So this is um, retrofit uses OKHttp OK to make the request. So we can use the this credentials object and use the basic method to reference the type of authorization we're doing. So that's like if I was to go in here and go into authorization and select basic auth, it would ask me for a username and a password. So that's essentially what we're doing. We're saying, okay, we're doing basic auth. Here's our here's our username. Here's our password. Those are our credentials. Or you could go no auth and then attach in the header like this. Uh, either way will work. So I'm just going to do it with basic auth. That's what I'm going to do right here. That's exactly what I'm doing right here. Okay, now we're going to create our search string. So create a new string, call it search string, and just set it equal to nothing. And this is this is going to be uh, essentially what this Q value is going to be. So right here. So I have a star. Uh, and then also all this stuff here that we're essentially building this string right here with our search string. Uh, so to, to start off, I guess the, the easiest thing to do is check for if the search string isn't empty. So if uh, m search string or search text dot equals empty, if it doesn't equal empty, then we know we have something. So then we can go search string. Whoops, sorry, if I could type search string 
equals search string plus m search text dot get text dot to string. So that will automatically append that first portion. And now we can get our city, our state, and our country. So we'll do another if statement. So if not m preferred, uh, we'll start with city, I guess, dot equals nothing. So if there is a preferred city, then we can say search string, search string equals search string plus whatever we want to add. So in our case, it'll be city and then plus m city. That will add the city. And notice that I didn't use the plus here. Um, you don't need to with when you're using retrofit. Uh, it's the same thing as if I, I was to leave, I think if I leave a white space here, it would be interpreted the same way. Um, so that's just, I just wanted to make sure I explain myself there. So plus city. Um, so here I'm just using a white space and I'm going to do that for each one of these parameters. Essentially that's what, that's like saying and that's why we define the default operator to be and it will interpret this white space as an and. So it'll say and city it equals preferred city. So now we'll do the preferred state province state province and then change this to state underscore province and then last one is going to be the country whoops so just copy that and whoops next line preferred country and put that here and then change this to country so there we go so that will create our search string and uh, so that's it now we just need to actually make the request so we create our call object and specify the data type that we're looking for so we're looking for a hits a hits object as we talked about in the previous video, uh, previous videos, sorry. And then we just do search API dot, uh, search API dot search to reference the method. That's this method right here I'm calling on the search API. Now I'm going to pass all the parameters. So the first one is the header map. The second one is the keyword and because we're specifying the default operator to be and. And then I'm doing search string and I want to append a star to the search string to make sure that um, I get everything. So uh, actually, no. Actually, the star shouldn't go here because after the search string is created, it should be up here. So if if there's search text, um, we also want to add a star here to make the the query more robust, to, or not robust, uh, make it search for more things. Because if I was to enter a single keyword, like if I was just to put like awesome, awesome right here, it would only look for posts with the keyword awesome and nothing else. But if I put a star, it will look for the keyword awesome and then whatever other text is also in the post. So it's important that you add that star there. Uh, okay, so that's good. Now we can execute it. So do call.nq to queue up the, the uh, query and do new callback for the response. And then now in here, in these two methods, the on failure or on response, we can handle what the response is gonna do or what we're gonna do with the response. So on failure is easy. Uh, we can just do log e and say, uh, I guess we can just print out what happened. So plus uh, t dot get message and then tell the user that something went wrong. So do toast uh, get activity and say search failed. So that's easy. But now in on response, this is actually going to be kind of tricky. Um, there's a couple of things we need to handle. So I'm going to surround it in a try catch. First, we need to catch a null pointer in case there's any null values. So log e null pointer plus e dot get message. And we're gonna need to catch a bunch of other stuff too. So catch, catch. We're gonna need to catch an index out of bounds exception. And obviously I've just discovered this from testing. You wouldn't know this right away. Uh, maybe you would, I don't know. But uh, I discovered this through testing. So that's why I'm surrounding this in a try catch. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is let's just uh, create a log and say the server response. And we can just do response.toString. That will retrieve this, the entire server response, or that will retrieve, retrieve the server response code. So uh, like it'll say status okay, and just kind of like the general, was it successful or was it not successful? That's, that's what that will retrieve. Now we need to get the actual data. So let's go uh, if response dot is successful. So if we have a successful response, 
we can do let's create a couple objects actually up here above the try above the try we'll do a hits list because that's what we're looking for hits list equals new hits list and do string json response equals blank and then so down inside of our if statement that i was just in i can say hits list equals response dot body dot get hits and retrieve those hits and then uh, let's go else so if there if it's unable if the response is not successful then let's just retrieve a JSON response and in that case it's going to be an error so if response we can do dot get error body and then dot string and that will return the error so if the response if something's wrong with the response basically uh, it won't be able to get the hits list object and instead it will return an error so we can get the error body and then we can proceed and figure out what we're going to do so now we'll do another log we'll do hits and I'll do hits list and here this loop is going to be iterating through the hits list so if you remember from what our response is going to look like where did I put it here uh, we get a list of hits so we get a bunch of hits so we need to iterate through those hits and that's what this loop is going to do so integer i equals zero i is less than hits list dot uh, size whoops oh get put right get post index dot size i was confused for a second there uh, because the hits list uh isn't isn't uh, a list itself it contains a list so if we look at the the model uh, of hits list we see that the hits list object isn't a list itself but it contains a list it contains a list of the post source objects so that's why we need to do get post index and then we can do dot size and then i plus plus oh comma semi need a semicolon semicolon yeah okay so right so now log we can say the data uh, what does it look like we can do hits list dot get get post index and then get whatever uh, item in that list it is and then retrieve the post and do I have a two string method? I do. So then we can print out the post that way. Uh, so that will print out basically all this data. So in each post, it'll print out all this data. In, the, in this post, it'll print out all this data and so on. And then, so if we have a post, we want to add it to the post list. So we just do dot add and copy this same thing right here. Add that to the post list. And there we go. Cool. So once that loop completes, we can just uh, write another log and maybe write how how many how big the post list is, how many uh, how many results we had, and then we would do something to set up the list of posts. So in our case, it's going to be adding the post to a recycler view and then displaying it in a grid. That's what we're going to be doing. But this is a good place now to test. So we actually have a query being executed. If it's successful, then we'll get some data printed out this log right here. So this is a perfect time to test. So let's run it. Looks like we got an error, uh, no, el no such element exception. And it points me to our loop where we get the, uh, get the password. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to change this to order by child and change this to field password and try that and let's run it okay it didn't crash this time so now let's open up the log and i'll get visor open here okay so before we search for make any kind of a fancy search uh well actually yeah i guess i'll just leave that uh so let's just let's just search with no criteria at all and see what happens so i'll just hit return and right away what do we get here so we get a 401 unauthorized. So here's our server response code. So that means that our our credentials are incorrect, basically, is what it's saying. Um, which which yeah, and then that'll that's probably the error code printing out there. And then there's a null pointer saying the list is empty. So it looks like our credentials are incorrect. So let me just double check the credentials. Yeah, so this query is wrong, the query where we get the password. So change this to uh, change this to child, and then do elastic search node, and then we're just going to do order by value. So order by value, and that should retrieve the password. So let's run it again, 
and try our query. Okay, so just gonna search with no keywords. And there we go, so it looks like we're getting a response. We get the 200 and also it's retrieving some data. So we have one post object there. We have a whole bunch of post objects. Uh, so now let's try to, make, we can refine the search a little bit. I'll just change my city to Abbotsford. Uh, I can't remember if capitalization matters, but let's leave that as lowercase and find out. So now my city is specified to Abbotsford. Let's see what the search pulls up. And yeah, so now it looks like it only retrieves one post, which is correct. The city is Abbotsford. So everything looks like it's working as we expect. Uh, we can try one more search. I'll get rid of the, the city preference. I'll get rid of the state province preference. I'll save that. So we're just searching Canada. And now I'll just search for like pen. So I remember this one right here, this pen is in good condition. So it should find only one post. So if I scroll down, there we go. It only finds the one where I mentioned a pen. Cool, so everything is working as expected. So in the next one, we'll work on taking this data and actually displaying it in a grid inside of search fragment so that the users can select their posts and view them. So I'll see you guys in the next video.